Welcome to Let's Therapy, where we get real and raw about your mental health, faith, and blended family. We're your hosts, counselors, Scott and Vanessa Martindale. Now let's therapy. Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Let's Therapy. I'm your host, Vanessa Martindale. Scott is out again this week, but we have... Dan, back with us this week, you guys. Dan is one of our BKF team members. He's absolutely amazing. He's our videographer. So all those amazing videos that you see, that's all Dan. I'm blushing. You can't see me. (laughs) Well, he is super uber talented. That is not anything that I could do on my own, but we are so grateful to have him on our team. But you guys, Dan is also, he holds a PhD in clinical psychology. And it's, it's been really cool, Dan, as you've been on to like hear your story about how the Lord transitioned you from that to now what you're doing um, with videography. And so we'll have to share that sometime. Um, But you, we were talking just a little bit ago before we started uh, on the podcast and you were talking about you actually did a lot of research in your um, clinical psychology program on resilience. And the topic today is actually building resilience in your marriage and step family. So I'm excited to dive into this and to pull your wisdom um, on this. And so, you know, I know that there is an importance when it comes to resilience and resilience helps individuals and families. um, And I think especially in step families, we deal with blended families. That's our ministry. It's what we do um, to help navigate the challenges and difficulties that may arise. And so, you know, with blended families, my gosh, we see that with so many things. It can be step parent, step child relationship, uh, sibling dynamics, co-parenting issues, even extended family issues, finances, all of those things. Um, And resilience helps us to adjust to these changes and build strong relationships despite the complexities that come about with that. Um, It also enables us to bounce back from maybe the setbacks or the conflicts and disappointments that we that come along with that. A lot of people, if you've been listening, they know our story. Um, You know, we've had to overcome a lot in our blended family. As we've gone through that, uh, the resilience that we've built from that, it has helped us to foster unity. Um, stability. Um, It's also caused a purity to happen in our heart. And so there's so much I think that can be spoken about resilience um, and and ways to build that. So Dan, I'm going to pass it off to you and talk about, you know, when it comes to step families, marriage, family in general, what are some ways that we can build resilience in our relationships and in our family? Yeah, I'm going to get I'm going to get a little can I say nerdy on the podcast? Totally Is get that nerdy. okay? Yeah. I'm going to get a little nerdy because I became so fascinated with the concept of resilience and yeah. trying to understand it. I've done some research on resilience. It started out, though, my interest in resilience, and I'll just say this really quickly, it started out because my father was in the Army for many years and did not experience a lot of the negative uh, side effects of experiences with war. So he didn't seemingly have post-traumatic stress disorder or struggle with being uh, overly hypervigilant, was not especially detached. He seemed to love and care for us. And I was like, wait, hold on a second. I'm, what I'm reading about resilience, this seems like quite a resilient person. Yeah. And so I started to dive into the research. And what I found was that there's a couple of different ways to understand resilience. A lot of people understand resilience as our ability to bounce back. Yeah. You know, in a step family, people come into your life, maybe it's a stepchild, step parent. And it kind of disrupts this, it kind of disrupts stuff, right? You're talking about visitation. Where do I spend holidays? How do I get to know this person? What are their interests? And there's a disruption there. So the first step with understanding resilience is recognizing that it's not something that just happens. It does require work. Yeah. But I don't necessarily agree that we're always bouncing back. I think that there is more of a transformation that occurs when we, you know, overcome challenges. Yeah. And we get to know those people that are new into our life. So the way I always understood resilience was your ability to successfully adapt Ooh, that's to stressful life occurrences. That's and good. and I don't I don't quote I don't coin that term. <laughs> that's from a researcher, Gil Wendell. I, I loved it and I use I'm, I'm gonna give him credit where credit is due. There you go. But I do like it though, because yeah. I think it hits the nail on the head when we think about how can we overcome these trials, these tribulations? Yeah. What can we do to create new relationships, to get to know these new people in our life, to maybe even repair a marriage that's broken? How do we reconnect with our spouse? How do we 
how do we do this? Yeah. And the resilient person can do it. Yeah. So it's important to understand how we define resilience. Getting a dissertation or a PhD was very difficult for me. Yeah. It was yeah. a huge challenge. And I had to undergo so much personal transformation. I had to learn to believe in myself and trust myself. I had to put in a lot of hours yeah. of studying just to pass these different tests. And as a therapist, I often questioned whether I was doing my job right. So I had to ask hard questions to supervisors and even to clients. How am I doing? How are we doing? Yeah. What transformation is happening in your life and what work are you putting in to transform? Mm. Because the resilient person is transformative. Yeah. No, that's so good. I love that you talked about transformation with that. Yes, we can bounce back, but it's what it's also asking God, like in the process of all of these things that are going on, like, God, what do you want to teach me in this? What do you want to show me in this moment? It's, I think a lot of it has to do with our posture and how we go in. And if we're going into it negatively, which is hard not to do because situations are hard, right? right. And you're struggling, you're struggling with self doubt or imposter syndrome, or, or like, am I going to make through? Am I going to make it through? That can be so difficult. And I think overcoming these things, like you were, we, we, you kind of hit on it a little bit earlier, Dan, but ways to build that, I think it becomes, I think it starts with just an open dialogue, either with ourselves or with other people, open and honest communication. I know, like you were saying yourself, like with your dissertation, I can't even imagine, first of all, I know. Such a monster. It's a monster. Scott talks about, he's like, when you graduate from your master's, we're going to go into our PhDs. I was like, I'm taking a long break from school <laughs> because I've been doing it for the last 10 years. No, but, um, but yeah, like undergoing that, like I, I'm sure that you, like you said, you were, ha you were having to ask people, you were having to communicate with your supervisor. You probably you and your wife had a lot of conversations you probably had a lot of conversations with the lord Prayer. like lord what are you doing <laughs> um so i think having the open and honest communication whether that's with your spouse it's with yourself and the lord or with godly counsel or people around you um especially with b blended families you know we want to encourage all families to express their thoughts and feelings and concerns in, in a respectful manner so i know one thing that we teach is we we talk about establishing family times where the family can come together and you can have these open and honest communications. Maybe in your marriage, it starts in the bedroom with just you and your spouse, but then how do we let that flow then into our family? And how are we having those conversations with our kids and our stepkids? You know, having regular family meetings in our book, Blended and Redeem, we talk about the marriage meeting, but you also need to have family meetings and come together as a family and be able to sit, hear one another, listen and hear to one another, not become defensive and be able to talk through these things that you know, you're dealing with having those check-ins. We do a lot of our check-ins at the dinner table. We do a lot of them whenever we're tucking our boys into bed. Scott and I do it every single night. It's just something that we've always done. It's our probably our favorite part of, of the day because we get to be with each other. The boys are in bed and we're just like, hey, how is your day? What's going on? Even it's a, if it's an interaction that he and I had that, that we didn't like, it's like, hey, you know what? Last night when we were talking about this, it felt like you got a little defensive or whatever, like talking through those things. So the check-ins are super important and we want to create a safe space for discussion. So I think when it comes to building resilience, having that open, honest communication um, and creating the safe places to do that is going to help you build that resilience and the transformation that you're talking about, Dan, because I think in those safe spaces is when we can be completely vulnerable. It's when we can find that connectedness and attachment that we need from one another versus uh, like hindering that from one another. So creating those safe spaces, having the open communication. Yeah, just recognizing that there's strength and vulnerability. Yeah. When you make time to have those family gatherings, those family meetings, and you talk about those things that are difficult, there's a growth process that occurs that would likely not occur otherwise. And I don't know about for you and Scott, but for me and my wife, sometimes we're just so busy. We don't, we kind of see each other in passing sometimes. Yeah. And the importance of making time for each other as husband and wife, praying together, praying about this stuff. If there's something difficult that we're going through, coming together and joining together in prayer. Yeah. And I'll say one great thing about resilient people is they understand the importance of connection. Yeah. That humans are wired for connection. Yes. So if you're going through difficult times, looking to and really asking the people in your life, those couple few close people, or if you don't have them now, trying to seek them out. Yeah. Going and getting connected in a life group, going yeah. and praying with people, going to church, looking for people around you 
getting involved in a hobby and then creating a connection through the interest in the hobby and having yeah. connection because you're better off with people. And we really do require each other to be resilient. If we want to yeah. successfully overcome things, we don't usually do that alone. Yes. We do that with others. And keeping, of course, in mind our connection with God and Jesus and going to God in prayer and having that close, intimate, honest, authentic connection with God and saying, I don't know what to do today. Yeah. Can you please help me today? That is huge. Oh, that is so huge. And I love that you said said that. And I think this all goes to like when you have that open communication and that dialogue going, like being flexible and adaptable in whatever it is that you guys are going through, you know, understanding that every situation is different. You know, if we're talking about blended families here, understanding that being flexible and adaptable can help navigate transitions in unexpected situations. This happens a lot in blended families. And so just being able to remain flexible and adaptable, I think that right there, it, it can bring down the wall a lot because when we go in with a posture of like, no, it's got to be this way, this has got to happen, it's my way or the highway, so to speak, then I think that's where that that foundation of trust that we were kind of talking about earlier, like it, it puts a crack in that tr- foundational trust and defensiveness, like walls can start coming up. So we want to be careful not to do that. And we want to remain flexible and adaptable because that can help navigate the transitions, unexpected situations. It embraces a mindset of growth and learning. And we want to remain teachable. We want to remain in a posture of like consistently wanting to grow with resilience. Like you were saying, Dan, when transformation happens through that, that's where the growth happens. That's where we learn. Um, And just being willing to adjust to plans and expectations as needed can go so far in our relationship and the things that we're going through as a blended family. You reminded me of a verse, James chapter one, verse three, because you know that the testing of your faith yes. produces perseverance. Yes. Don't you just love that? So good. The Bible is so clear about this. Yes. Challenges are an opportunity to grow, to grow closer to God first and foremost, and then grow closer to the people in our life. To grow closer to that stepchild that you don't know yet. Our ability to perceive it as an opportunity versus something we can never overcome. Going back to your point about outlook on things. Yeah. How do I view this? Am I going to come in it with an optimistic mentality or a pessimistic mentality? And if I know anything about Jesus, he always looked for God in the challenge. Yeah. There's so many verses in the Bible where he takes something that from the world's perspective is not good. And uses it to glorify God. And you have all these miracles. Yeah, man, that's so good. Going to our last point, Dan, we were talking about trust earlier and building that foundation. But building trust and fostering connections, like that's huge, huge in resilience. So taking time to build the trust within your marriage and blended family, being reliable and consistent and transparent. And I also think you guys relying on the Lord, like you were just talking about, Dan, relying on him, you guys, that he's going to see you through this, that the testing of your faith is going to build endurance. And so and through that endurance, You guys, that grace, it's that supernatural grace that the Lord will give us as we're going through these seasons to get through that. And and we can feel when the grace is being lifted. We can feel when the grace is um, ever so present. Also encouraging bonding activities, creating opportunities for family members to connect and develop meaningful relationships. So as we're building trust, as we're fostering those connections, we're then going to develop deep, meaningful relationships. That's where the bonding happens. That's where... Again, in those relationships, we're building that resilience together. We're growing together. We're um, providing that connectivity that we all so desperately need. Yeah. And the, the, the last thing I'll add is we are more resilient than we give ourselves credit for. Yes. We show up even when it's hard. We make it through and praise God for his strength and his endurance and all of that. So going back to what we were saying, you know, on one of the past episodes, giving ourselves credit. Because of God's strength that he provides us, yeah, we can make it through a lot of challenges in life. Yeah, no, that's so good. Well, you guys, you know, one thing to know is that building resilience, it can take time, it takes effort, and it takes intentionality. And it's important that we approach whatever challenges that we're going through. And as we're building resilience, to be patient, to be empathetic, again, having that spirit of willingness to learn, um, that teachable spirit, and grow together. So, yeah, it's good. The fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit. So good. 
Well, Dan, thanks again for being here with us today. We've enjoyed hearing from you and your wisdom. And you guys, we hope that this podcast has encouraged you. Tune in again, you guys, next week for another episode of Let's Therapy. We hope that you are blessed in all that you do. 